people in the back, they know what's going on. I mean, yes. You already <laughs> stand it up. Good job. <laughs> All right, this is a reminder not to rush the stage. <laughs> If everybody will please stand, we'll start out on our own.
So uh, uh, if, if that's something you're interested in, uh, OBDC to 77977. And uh, uh, so I wanted to put that out. Um, financial Peace, Courtney and uh, Ian are going to be starting our Financial Peace University class. That's uh, Dave Ramsey. It's, it's a scripturally based um, uh, money management. Um, and that's going to be starting here on September the 20th. Uh, we'll be honoring our graduates here on Sunday, July the 26th. So two weeks from today, we'll be doing our graduate uh, graduates. If you have a graduate that you would like us to honor, please see me um, so we can get that taken care of. It'll look a little different this year because of, again, because of the CDC stuff. But um, we're going to honor those graduates on the 26th. So uh, children, grandchildren, uh, uh, anybody you uh, would like us to honor, we'll do that. We are hosting the Brotherhood Breakfast here on Saturday morning, August 1st. Uh, so uh, I'll get you more information on that. Brotherhood started going back having their monthly uh, prayer meetings and breakfast, and we're going to be hosting that here in August. And then finally, um, oh, on uh, Wednesday, July 22nd, um, those of you who have been uh, uh, collecting bottle caps, um, Wednesday, July 22nd, Bob is going to go to Evansville. Uh, he's bringing back four benches and three big picnic tables. Um, we have to take flatbed trucks, or he has to take flatbed trucks to do that. Um, I think there are flatbed trailers. Uh, I think he has the trailers, um, but he needs uh, to borrow a couple of trucks, and obviously he can't drive two trucks at the same time, so if somebody is available on Wednesday the 22nd, uh, if you would be interested in allowing them to take your truck to pull a, a flatbed, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, the picnic tables are going to stay here and be in the back. Uh, we're building a building back here. I don't know if you knew that, that storage building. Um, so you see little yellow flags back there, that's what that is. Uh, and then there are, we anticipate having some kind of a lean-to or something on it uh, that would kind of create like shelter house so we can have some things out there. So uh, the picnic tables are gonna go out there. Uh, so if you could help with that, uh, it would be much appreciated. And then uh, uh, this is kind of an announcement and a praise and all at the same time. Devin and Bethany had their babies. Carl and Sandy are great grandparents again. And I said babies, plural. They have a little boy, Weston Michael, and a little girl, Owen and Olivia. They were born uh, on uh, July 8th. So uh, we're, we're blessed that, that uh, mom and babies are fine. We're not sure about dad, but mom and babies are fine. But Devin may be holding on, so we celebrate that. Um, our prayer list for the week, um, we continue to be in prayer for Jill Cooley. Uh, who uh, is, continues to uh, go through treatments and battle pancreatic cancer. Uh, for Carson Cook, uh, Ginger sent me some uh, information uh, yesterday or the day before that uh, she had had like, uh, a platelet procedure or something. Her blood count was a little low, but uh, the good news is she's gaining weight um, and she's back over 100 pounds. So, uh, 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 we're seeing some, we're seeing God work there in some great ways. Uh, Lauren Sharp uh, is doing really well, better, right, uh, Pam? Uh, but we want to continue to uh, uh, pray for her. Mike Poling uh, continues to uh, have tests and, and uh, go through treatments. Uh, Morris Alford uh, has some heart issues, uh, and uh, he had a, uh, his heart is now back in rhythm. And uh, some of those issues were creating other issues. And the doctors, I think, from talking to Judy, some of the doctors feel like that getting his heart back in rhythm is going to solve some of those other things. So we, uh, we uh, uh, praise God that that, that procedure worked. Uh, Jess Mullins, uh, Tyler Elsey, uh, Luther Wheeler, uh, Sandy Ward. Uh, Sandy continues to battle uh, kidney stones and some other things. Uh, Shona Thomas and Rachel Bladen's cousin Jamie. Uh, I heard from Shona today. My phone is, I have a new phone. Um, uh, 
shown an email this, or text me this morning and just received word that Jamie was having issues with one of his three drains and is back in the hospital. They will know later today if they have to go back in to correct the problem. Uh, pre please pray that they don't have to do that. So uh, we want to continue to uh, remember him. And, uh, um, and also, uh, Tina helped his family, Doug's nephew's wife, um, that we have, a, we have been having on the prayer list. Um, she passed away last Sunday right after church. Um, I believe the, 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 the funeral was Wednesday, right? So uh, we want to continue to remember that family. Um, Richard, would you lead us in a word of prayer for these prayer concerns today? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We can come before your throne today, Lord, to lift up these prayer concerns that are on our heart, Lord, our truly our families, Lord, our loved ones that are sick, that are having procedures. We just lift them up to you, Lord. We place them in your hand. We ask that you take their burdens from them, Lord. A lot of times the physical pain or as we know, it's ours to bear. Help us, give us all strength, especially them, to bear that. But give them peace. I pray for these people and I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Funny story before we get started. Um, Adam and Megan read around all the time. If you're around BB, you can see them running. Not only are they running, but they're usually pushing a, one of those running strollers with the kids in the front. And uh, I, I had a, an interview to get 10 o'clock yesterday morning. I'd forgotten some things at the newspaper office. And so I ran to the newspaper office and I was grabbing those things so I wasn't going to be late to, the, to my interview. And I came out and there was a woman running at Market Street pushing a stroller. And uh, uh, here comes Megan Marie. So I'm telling stuff in. And I went, You're my hero. <laughs> Except it wasn't Megan Marie. <laughs> and uh, she called me a name. Um, Balaam had one in the Old Testament. Um, I was a little taken aback. Um, and then what really got weird is later when I was in the middle of my interview, Megan Marie actually ran by. And I, it's, I was scared, like, to, okay, that is her. Okay. So uh, be, be careful who you encourage, because sometimes evidently people don't like to be encouraged. But uh, anyway, um, be honest this morning. There are times in your life when you wonder if anything you do actually makes a difference. If you weren't here life would just kind of go on. That you aren't making any sort of an impression. That, that you aren't doing anything really outstanding. Not just here in our world, but sometimes do you feel that way about your relationship with God too? Like, I'm, I'm just sort of here and, and, and I'm not really doing anything great. I'm just sort of here and and when I'm not here anymore, is it really going to make any difference? You ever feel that way? I think, to be honest, we have all felt that way at some point. And, and some of us may be feeling that way right now. That may be how we live our lives. We're just sort of going through time and, and we aren't really making any kind of an impression on anybody. And if that's you this morning, I hope that when we're finished today, you'll have a little different outlook. Um, our scripture today, I, I have to admit, is, is one of my favorites. I, I lean on it a lot. It's, it's found in the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, you can begin to flip there. Or in a minute, it's going to be up on the screen. And uh, before I read you the focal passage today, I want to give you just a little bit of background. At this point, Moses is dead. And God's people are getting ready to pass through the Jordan River on dry ground and into, finally, the Promised Land. You know, we always see the movie, you know, Moses, and they go through the Red Sea on dry ground to, to escape Egypt. Well, they go through the Jordan River, the same thing happens when they get to the edge of the Jordan River to get into the Promised Land. God holds the water back and they walk through to the Promised Land on dry ground. 
And in chapter 4 of Joshua, Joshua has taken over for Moses as the leader of God's people. He gets this request from God that we might think is a little strange. As the Hebrew nation is passing through the waters, God tells Joshua to have a member of each of the 12 tribes stop and pick up a big stone from the floor of the river and bring it with them over to the other side. And when they had crossed the Jordan and were now in the promised land, that night when they set up camp, Joshua was to take those 12 stones and create a monument, stack them together and create a monument, a, a memorial by stacking them up. And that brings us to our verse, verses this morning in Joshua chapter 4, beginning uh, from 1 to 7. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Sons are eating of God's word. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. I thank you for the opportunity to share your word uh, with our, our family here and, and, and those on social media who will see it during the week. And Father, I ask a blessing upon those people who aren't able to be here with us today, that you would grant us help and you would grant us comfort. Most of all, Father, I just ask that as we, as we ponder your word, that that it would allow us to grow closer to you, not only intellectually in our minds, but spiritually in our hearts. Father, we are honored by your presence with us today. And we ask these things in your son's name and for his sake. Amen. Other than Melissa, has anyone ever heard of a woman named Henrietta Lacks? I didn't think so. If you have it, you are not alone. Because for the most part, she is lost in history. A rather sad story on the life of a woman that very few cared about. In fact, here's a picture of her. Henrietta was a black woman who was born in 1920 in Roanoke, Virginia. At birth, her name was Loretta Pleasant the daughter of Eliza and Johnny Pleasant. And no one is sure when her name was even changed to Henrietta. But when she was four years old, her mom died while her mom was giving birth to her tenth child. Her father wasn't able to care for all of those kids by himself, so he moved everyone to the town of Clover, Virginia, where he dispersed his children to live with members of his family. Henrietta, at age four, ended up living with her grandfather, where she shared a room with her nine-year-old cousin, David. Now, like most members of her family, especially at that time, Henrietta worked on the tobacco farm from an early age. She put in long hours. And when she was 14 years old, she gave birth to a son, Lawrence, who was fathered by Henrietta's cousin, who she shared a room with, David. Four years later, David fathered another baby, this time a little girl named Elsie, and she was born with some severe developmental disabilities. In 1941, when Henrietta was 20 years old, she and David were married. 
And later that year, they moved from Virginia to Maryland, where David had found a job working in a steel mill. They purchased a house with the help of their cousin. And Henrietta had three more children by her cousin David. A son, Sonny, a daughter, Deborah, and a son, Joseph. Joseph was born in 1950 at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland, one of the few hospitals in the entire East Coast that was not segregated. She was 30 years old. About four months after Joseph was born, Henrietta felt a knot in her uterus and assumed, along with friends and family, that she was again pregnant. Going to the doctor, she found out she wasn't pregnant. They began to do a series of tests, nearly all of them negative. But in January of 1951, Henrietta was told that she had a malignant carcinoma in her cervix and there wasn't anything they could do. And Henrietta Lacks died eight months later on October the 4th, 1951. She was 31 years old. She was buried in an unmarked grave because her family couldn't afford a headstone. And over time, nearly everyone even forgot where exactly she was buried. Now that's a story of about a woman that's pretty sad. And like I said, until I told you about her this morning, most of you, Melissa aside, have never even heard of her. In fact, you're probably sitting here now asking yourself, where in the world is Pat going with this? And that would be a good question. So, if you're my age or anywhere near my age, here's as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. While doctors were trying to diagnose Henrietta's condition and then find a way to treat it, one of the doctors took two samples of tissue cells from her, one containing the cancer cells and one sample containing healthy cells. He did so without Henrietta's knowledge or without her consent, which to this day is argued by her descendants. But at that point in 1950 was normal procedure. Now those cancer cells were found to have a very special property. They were unique in that they reproduced at a very high rate. And while most cultures that were taken from other patients only lasted a few hours or a few days before they died and were useless to research, Henrietta's cancer cells didn't do that. In fact, they lasted so long that doctors refer to them as immortal. In fact, today, 70 years later, they are still alive. Segments of those cells have been sent to labs all over the world to doctors who are studying ways to treat all sorts of disease, including cancer, AIDS, and those cells are fundamental in testing for humans who are allergic to all sorts of things like cosmetics and adhesives on bandages and all of those things. In fact, if you've ever been tested for those things that you're allergic or sensitive to, Henrietta Lacks cells were probably used to make those determinations. Dr. Jonas Salk used Henrietta's cells when he developed the vaccine for polio. 
saving millions of lives and saving millions more people from horrible suffering. My research in getting ready for this message said that since that culture was taken from her, scientists have grown, listen to this, 50 million metric tons of her cells. And there are over 11,000 medical patents for treatments and cures for disease that involve her cells. Full disclosure this morning, I was going to try to figure out a way to show you what a metric ton looked like. That size is determined by density. So here's what you get. One metric ton is equal to 2,204.6 pounds. So metric ton is a little over 200 pounds more than what we would consider a ton. And they've made 50 million of those. Think about that. A young black woman named Henrietta Lacks died at 31 years old and left a husband and children. And when she died on October 4th of 1951, she had no idea that decades later, Morehouse College would hold an annual health conference named for her. That the city of Atlanta, Georgia would have a day named in her honor. That Johns Hopkins University would have a world-renowned lecture series named after her that she would be awarded a doctorate degree from Morgan State University, that there would be a high school in Vancouver, Washington, named the Henrietta Lacks Health and Bioscience High School, that she would be inducted into the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame, and that her picture would hang in the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. So now you know about the life of a woman that an hour ago you never heard of. Why? Well, because you may be sitting here this morning or you may be watching this message on social media and you may be thinking that you are an afterthought. That you've never done anything of any consequence. That when you die, very few people will notice and even fewer people will remember. But here's what you don't know. We don't know the life-changing work that God is doing with us, through us, and in us every day. And we may not even know it. See, when we prioritize God in our lives and in our homes and at work and with our children and with those around us that we know and with those around us that we don't know, we have no idea how God is going to use that encounter, that moment, to impact lives for generations to come. You may not be there to see it, but just think for a moment about the legacy that you may leave behind that God is creating in you right now. I mean, maybe you're like me and you didn't go to church as a child. I didn't. But God showed himself in a powerful way that led me to an eternal relationship with him. And in part, that eternal relationship that God allowed me to have with Him has led my children to have an eternal relationship with Him. And for some of you, I am blessed that God through me helped you find an eternal relationship with Him. And when we built this building, we talked about a Greek proverb that says, wise men plant acorns to grow oak trees under the shade of which they will never sit. Wise men plant 
Wise men plant acorns to grow oak trees under the shade of which they will never sit. Well, I'm never going to get to enjoy that shade. Why should I plant that tree? By the time it's big enough to have shade, I'll be long gone from here. Family, when, when you get serious about your relationship with God, you're planting acorns. You may never enjoy the shade of that oak tree that's going to grow from that acorn, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't plant it. And digging a hole and tossing in an acorn may not seem like a very significant thing to you. In fact, it may seem like a waste of your time. But someday, a person is going to find shade and rest under that tree. And your sacrifice of a couple of minutes will be rewarded. And you'll never know it. See, we can find all sorts of reasons not to come to church. Because we're busy people, right? But we need to understand that what we're doing may not immediately impact us. If somehow we could fast forward several generations into the future and see our great, great, great grandchildren sitting in a church service next to their children and their grandchildren, wouldn't that be worth it? See, that's the seed that we plant. We get to enjoy it now, but the real harvest will be generations from now. Someday, because of your faithfulness, your great, great, great grandchildren are going to get baptized and they're going to have their eternity in heaven is going to be secure. And in large part, it's going to be because you were faithful now. Jeremiah 29.1 Scripture that Courtney and Hillary throw around a lot. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. See, God said, I know, I know the plans I have for you. And he set that plan in place before you ever got here. He set that plan in place before your great, 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 great grandfather ever got here or anybody else. God looked in the future and saw you. He said, I have plans for them. I have plans for him. I have plans for her. Plans for them to prosper. Plans for them to not be harmed. Plans to, that give them hope and plans that give them a future. And that was set in front of you before you ever even got here. So if you think you're an afterthought, not in God's eyes you are. But I believe that Satan whispers in our ear all the time that we're just spinning our wheels. That what we do doesn't make any difference to anybody. That we're forgotten by people and we're forgotten by God. Henrietta Lacks probably died thinking that. And boy, was she wrong. So if you think that today, I want to encourage you to consider that you may be wrong too. That what's actually happening is that you're taking those memorial stones and you're building a monument, you're building a memorial so that your future generations will be able to look back and see their spiritual journey and ask questions and hear stories. Not about how great you were, but about how faithful you were and about how great God is. Let's pray here. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I, I thank you for the incredible work you did in the life of this woman that I just stumbled upon. Millions and millions of people have been saved 
physically and have been saved from pain and suffering because you did a work through this woman who died thinking that she probably didn't make any difference at all. Father, help us to see that as we look around society and we don't think we make any kind of a difference, that, that you love us and we make a difference to you and, and we are important to you and that you know us. You're, you're not just a passing glance. You know us intimately. Your word says that you have counted the number of hairs on our heads. That doesn't sound to me like somebody who's insignificant. That doesn't sound to me like somebody who's just going through life and has no purpose. Father, maybe today's the day that somebody goes, you know what? I may not make a difference to anybody else, but I make a difference to God. And that's the only person I need to care about. And if that's somebody in this room this morning, I just ask that you would place a boldness in their heart that they would come forward and share that with me during our time of invitation. And in sharing that with me, then we can share with others. Maybe there's somebody who needs to rededicate themselves to you. Maybe they've kind of wandered in a different direction and they've gotten out and they they're not sure how they got there. They just want to get back. Help us to see, Father, that you always give us a road back. Maybe there's somebody who needs to join the fellowship of this church, or maybe there's somebody who just needs to pray. Whatever you're placing on our hearts today, Father, I just ask that you would give us the boldness to answer that. Father, we love you. We ask these things in the name of your Son and of our Savior. Jesus Christ.
I'm going to talk about somebody Sunday that nobody's ever heard of. And I said her name is Henrietta Lacks. And Melissa went, I know who she is. And no, that's right, she's a doctor. <laughs> you look her up, it's really interesting. There's a lot more to her life. But, um, the genome, is that the right word, Melissa? The genome is, is named H-E period L-A after Henrietta, the first few letters of her name, and the Lacks, the last two letters of her name. Um, millions and millions of people have been saved because of cancer cells that, that were in her body 70 years ago and they're still being saved today. It's amazing. It's an amazing story. So uh, I hope that blessed you this morning. It's a little different kind of a message, but I hope it blessed you this morning. Um, don't forget all the things that are going on through the week. Uh, the Bible studies and, and uh, Thursday night if you can come and help move some chairs and things like that. And then uh, Debbie, Debbie's wedding on Saturday at 3. Uh, just all the things going on. Um, just continue to uh, lift not only our church up in prayer, but, but our world as we continue to fight this virus. And that, uh, that, that God will be glorified in it. Uh, so, uh, uh, again, we just but we thank you for being here. And uh, I'm going to ask Adam if he would close us in a word of prayer this morning. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today. Please be with those that, that could not be here today and, and every those uh, around the world that are struggling t today, Lord. And thank you for using us as your instruments to to, to glorify you. Uh, thank you for the message today. Please help us uh, go out throughout the week and, and plant seeds this week and, and the next and the following after that so that to the generations after us that they can see you and can worship you and love you the same way that we do. It's in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen.